Welcome everybody and good morning, afternoon and good evening. And my name is Margaret Johnson. I'm one of the general managers at the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority and I'm uh, Australia's ICRI focal point. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all to this event and uh, this marks the handover of ICRI chair from Australia, uh, Indonesia and Monaco to the United States of America. Uh, some just quick housekeeping before we start. So as everybody hopefully is aware, this event will be recorded and we have interpretation available. So it's in English, French and Spanish. Uh, we also have over 140 participants, which is all very exciting for us here at the Ikri family. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners on whose lands we are meeting today their elders past, present and emerging. And I'd like to acknowledge any traditional owner that is joining us here tonight. So in July, 2018, when Australia, Indonesia and Monaco Secretary Plan of Action was adopted by this group, we agreed that collective and bold actions were needed now to protect uh, our coral reef ecosystems into the future. Uh, it's been a highly productive three years, which has seen the expansion of the ICRI network. A number of actions have been implemented and a reinvigoration of the GCRMN. And that's just to, to name a few, and we'll move on to that as part of the meeting. First, let me uh, take time to reflect on those achievements. And the last, uh, before we hand over to the United States, I'd like to uh, give the floor to Francis, Wilfred, Hendra and Theresa uh, to report on the ICRI Secretariat and our achievements. Francis, over to you first. Thank you, Margaret. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. So with my colleagues from the ICRI Secretariat, we are going to briefly summarize the main accomplishment of the ICRI Secretariat over the last three years. So as you can see on the screen, there is a growing interest to join ICRI. We have now, so we have 15 new members and which uh, is important to underline is the fact that there is now like uh, some non coral reef country who are joining, for instance, Canada and Germany. So which demonstrates the value of coral reef at a global scale. Uh, in addition to these 15 new members, we have also, we, we still currently receiving more requests and two are really of interest. One is the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the other one is from the Commonwealth Secretariat. Out of the 54 countries of the Commonwealth Secretariat, 37 of them have coral reef and they account for about 45% of the global world scale of coral reef. Can you see my screen? I guess it. Okay, sorry. So we, we organized uh, over the last three years, we organized three general meetings. So one was held in Monaco, one was held in Australia, and the last one was held online. It was the first time uh, it could organize an event online. Uh, and all the meetings there were very well attended with about like 80% at each meeting. We, we adopted 11 documents, so ever a resolution or recommendation. So for instance, uh, a few of the decisions adopted were related to the inclusion of coral reef in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. We also updated the 2005 ECO resolution on coral reef restoration. This is very timely because of the current decade of ecosystem restoration. One of the resolution was also on the revising the ICRI organization, organization and management procedure. So now overseas territory can become an ICRI member and uh, New Caledonia, a French overseas territory was the first uh, overseas territory to, to use this, uh, this new rule of ICRI. Three ad hoc committee were created. So the three ad hoc committee will report later. So I won't say more about this. Back to back with the ICRI general meeting, we organized two thematic workshops, one on uh, sustainable finance and one on reef resilience. And finally, we, we organized the several event side event uh, during the last three years. So for instance, like the launch of the decade of ecosystem restoration with over 300 participants. 
We also held the side events at the Monaco Ocean Week or at our ocean. And we also had a, we, we were also a part of the Coral Reef event during the G20 Environment Minister meeting. Finally, as you all know, like uh, the six international tropical marine management ecosystem was cancelled, unfortunately, due to COVID pandemic. Uh, over the last three years, we also have tried to improve uh, our communication and, and outreach. So thanks a lot for the funding from Australia. A new, web, a new website was developed. Uh, the new website is now uh, hosting the Global Socioeconomic Monitoring Initiative for Coastal Management, known as, as SOCMOND. We are also more uh, present on the, on, on the Twitter sphere, so the, we double the number of uh, subscribers or followers uh, over the last three years. We also have a newsletter with over 3,400 uh, subscribers. We send uh, a newsletter about every six weeks. Uh, so I'm taking also this opportunity to encourage to join Twitter and to subscribe to our newsletter. Finally, we, we, are develop we, we developed a lot of partnerships. So among some of them, I, I want to mention that ICRE has been invited uh, to the Global Fund for Coral Reef Executive Board as a strategic partner. ICRI is also an official supporter of the decade of uh, ecosystem restoration and the Secretariat is involved in Fort Tax Force. ICRI was also on the founding committee of the new G20 initiative related to Coral Reef uh, Research and Development Accelerator Platform. And now ICRI is also uh, part of the initiative governing committee as a supporting partner. So I'm now going to hand over to Teresa for a brief summary of key action during the plan of action. Thank you very much. Thank you, Francis. So the plan of action 2018 to 2020 was adopted at the first general meeting held under this secretariat in Monaco in 2018. It was later extended until 2021 due to the COVID-19 global pandemic. The plan is structured around four themes, which are theme one, to promote effective and adaptable solutions to improve the protection of coral reefs. Theme two, understand the trends of coral reefs. Theme three, live reef food fish trade. And theme four, to help reduce anthropogenic threats to coral reefs. The Secretariat and ICRI members have implemented a number of actions under each of these themes. Thank you, next slide. Under theme one, which is effective and adaptable solutions, ICRI focused on strengthening policy and legislative frameworks to protect coral reefs, promoting and building capacity for innovative financing, supporting reef resilience at local, regional and global scales, and promoting leading practice reef restoration through partnerships, investment and capacity building among members. Next slide, thank you. Next slide, thank you. Some key activities under this theme include the development of summaries of legislative and regulatory mechanisms, which are in place at the national level for the protection of coral reefs and related ecosystems. The studies published are from Fiji, Seychelles, France and Costa Rica. The purpose of these studies was to highlight good practices in these countries and identify any potential gaps in the implementation of these mechanisms. This work also complements the ICRI UNEP study done in 2019, which analyzed global and regional policy instruments and governance mechanisms. Next slide. Under the to topic financing for coral reefs, a workshop on innovative financing was held in Monaco in 2018. The workshop gave an overview of opportunities and approaches for financing the conservation of coral reefs and related ecosystems. ICRI also contributed to the Coral Reef Economy Report. The report highlights that shifting reefs from decline towards a healthy state could unlock tens of billions of dollars in additional value. And to help build capacity on financing mechanisms for reefs, the Conservation Finance Alliance created 13 training modules for ICRI, which each introduce a different mechanism. All of these resources can be found on the ICRI forum website. Next up slide, please. 
under the topic of reef restoration, ICRI has worked extensively over the last three years through its ad hoc committee on reef restoration. The committee produced several reports on reef restoration and updated the 2005 ICRI resolution on artificial coral reef restoration and rehabilitation. We will hear more about this later today. Next slide. Under theme two, which is understanding the trends of coral reefs, ICRI has reinvigorated the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network. The GCRMN is now coordinated by the Australian Institute of Marine Science. Most significantly, the GCRMN will, will release its sixth status of the coral reefs of the world report, which is the first report of its kind since 2008. Next slide, thanks. Oh, nope, that's the right slide. If I could just remind everybody to please join us after this event for the official launch of the report. It will start at 12.30 CEST. And I will now hand over to Hendra, who's representing Indonesia, to talk about theme three of the plan of action. All right, uh, thank you, Teresa. So next slide. Uh, so as uh, Teresa and, uh, already mentioned, that uh, we focus also on RFT. That's because there are some important uh, uh, reasons for that, and then also we need to limit the catch up actions of, of the coral reef of this. So um, that's, you can see that from uh, the slide that this will be extended, uh, expanded area. And on the next slide, please, under the ACRI plan of action, we have already uh, produced the documents. Yes, the documents of uh, LRFT under value of fees and opportunities for change. So we have also some uh, separable documents on LRFT, some next slide, please. Uh, uh, we have uh, the uh, several documents uh, already in LRFT that you, you can see in the, in the screen. And next slide. And Indonesia No Action Plan, we try to make sure that the data and information, and also uh, we conducted the measuring of the input and then also uh, the monitoring for the resources. However, uh, due to the COVID 19, we um, have got problems that the threat is not high as uh, expected. So uh, we would like to end it. Uh, the presentation by saying that the challenges and recommendation, next slide please, uh, need to the fisheries management plan and also certification and traceability practices, regulation and enforcement at a new national and regional level. So um, we understand that the recommendation from the, the study that will be improved uh, more capacity, reducing IU fishing threat and develop certification traceability system. And we need to also strengthen regional and international commitment. So thank you, Teresa, back to you. Wilfred, I think the floor is yours now. Yes, good morning. Sorry, I was talking, but my mic was not uh, on. Um, nice to meet you. Um, I be, I'm working with uh, Monaco, and I uh, would like first to thank my colleagues from uh, Australia, in Indonesia, and, um, and from the Secretariat for the years, the two years I've passed with, to work with them uh, within ICRI. E so uh, the steam for um, we um, uh, on the action plan was uh, the outcome we were looking for was to highlight anthropogenic threats to reefs and provide information to members and actions that can be taken to reduce threats. Um, we have addressed uh, the situation and uh, we found that uh, the noise pollution was uh, less uh, considered last year. And it's not a common topic to, uh, to raise uh, as, a, as, a, as a pollution. And uh, in this, uh, we uh, produce uh, two studies. One is a scientific information paper. And that shows that uh, actually uh, the uh, organisms are affected by noise, uh, mostly at the larvae, style, uh, at the larvae um, form. And the second one is uh, legal and uh, policy approaches at uh, national and regional and international level uh, that uh, address the uh, noise pollution. Uh, so um, the two papers are available on the ACRI website. 
Thank you. Thanks, Francis. Does maybe, anyone else? Are you right, Wilfred? No, maybe I have to conclude that the uh, all the, uh, the the report is available on the website too, and uh, it will explain more details of what are the uh, outcomes of this uh, uh, secretariat. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you, Francis, Teresa, uh, Hendra, and Wilfred. Uh, I'd just like to say throughout this secretariat period, there have been uh, three ad hoc co committees which were established. Uh, and I'd just like to hear there was the uh, post 2020 global biodiversity framework, the reef restoration resilience based management and oh, sorry, reef restoration and resilience based management. And we'd like to hear, can I just pass to Emily Corcoran? Hello, and thank you very much. Let me just share my screen and hopefully um, in a moment, you'll see it in presentation mode. If someone could give me a thumbs up that that is coming through okay and you can hear me. Good, excellent. Thank you so much for the opportunity today to present to you a very brief snapshot of the work that we have been doing in this ad hoc committee over the term of this secretariat. The focus of our work has been to engage with and contribute to the CBD process to develop a new global biodiversity framework and to make sure that coral reefs are appropriately reflected within that. So the ad hoc committee was formed in December 2018 at the Monaco general meeting and it had three terms of reference firstly to develop a recommendation secondly to coordinate engagement and then to communicate and advocate the information forward into from the recommendation to be taken up in the CBD process. The mandate of the ad hoc committee runs through to the CBD COP15, which has been delayed and is now scheduled for May 2022. This ad hoc committee has been co-chaired by Chuck Cooper from Vulcan, Wilfred Derry from Monaco and Francis Storr from the Secretariat. It has 40 active members and they represent 11 countries and 12 organisations. Within the ad hoc committee, we have also had a subgroup focusing on communication and advocacy work stream, pulling together some really creative and, and great talents across these, these members. And we've also been working closely with colleagues from the Restoration Ad Hoc Committee and also the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network, as there are some very strong overlaps. My forward button. Button is not working. I'll just keep hitting the buttons until something happens. Otherwise, I will freestyle. I can't get it to go forward. No, you, you are stuck with this slide, I'm afraid. So I'll continue because we've limited on time. Um, the first output, of course, was the recommendation, and this was adopted in May 2020. Um, this was developed through extensive expert consultation and adopted by consensus of the ICRI members. The importance of this was it gave ICRI a position and a voice within the CBD process and has formed very much from the core of our engagement and advocacy work building from that. I think it's really important to note the significance of this consensus with ICRI members being custodians of 75% of the world's coral reefs, this really represents a strong voice in the international community. The slide I wanted to show you shows that there has been good progress against the four key asks that we set out in the operative paragraphs of the recommendation. Um, and it, it would have shown you that, the, that we've seen good progress in terms of discussion of vulnerable ecosystems in the process in the uptake of the recommended coral reef health indicators um, and that 
there is still a lot of work to do between now and the adoption. The post 2020 process is very much a party led process and we've been working closely with parties through the ad hoc committee to make sure we're connected between the ICRI focal points and the CBD focal points and very much appreciate the work of the ad hoc committee members in, in progressing this. We have many forms of communication, including a WhatsApp group, which we use for real time sharing within the CBD process. Um, and helps to engage the active and committed group of people. Another thing I really wanted to share with you is a snapshot of some of the, oh, Tom's sharing for me, um, it, and he's on the right side. Um, so this is through something I really wanted to share, which is throughout the process, we have been gathering support and giving voice to a really wide range of actors um, who are speaking out for the inclusion of coral reefs within the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. And these are people who represent governments, organizations, youth, indigenous peoples, local communities, and the scientific community, as well as advocates. Thank you, Tom, for rescuing me. Um, if you could go to the next, thank you. I also wanted to emphasize the number of publications and articles that have been produced through this ad hoc committee to try and reach our target audiences in different ways. Next slide, please. We've been sharing all of the information that has been produced via the coralpost2020.org website, which sits within the ICRI forum. This is a, a rich resource, which includes supporting tools for negotiating delegations, but broader awareness information as well. It provides access to the recommendation in multiple languages and also all of the ICRI submissions to the CBD process. Next slide, please. So this is a run through of some of what we have done, but there is still much to do before COP15 in May if we are to achieve the objectives of our work. A couple of points that we are working hard to achieve are to make sure that the wording of the goals and targets of the global biodiversity framework create recognizable hooks that can leverage the urgent action we need for coral reefs during the implementation phase. And we need to make sure that the coral reef indicators are both retained in the monitoring framework and that this monitoring framework is adopted as part of the package of the global biodiversity framework by the COP15. Next slide, please. So this concludes my report and thank you for your attention. Thanks also to the co-chairs and members of the ad hoc committee for their continuing work, to the secretariat co-hosts for your support through this term, and also particularly to the parties who are using the outputs of this work in the ongoing negotiations to secure a positive outcome for coral reefs within the global biodiversity framework. Thank you and last slide. Thank you very much, Emily. And uh, you, you did very well under technical pressures. Uh, and thank you, Tom. Uh, next, uh, Ian McLeod, if you could, uh, is going to give us a presentation on the Ad Hoc Committee on Reef Restoration. And Ian is from the Australian Institute of Marine Science. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Margaret. Um, yeah, thumbs up if you can see the slides. Uh, great. All right, so yeah, my name is Ian McLeod. I've had the, the great pleasure of uh, co-chairing the Ad Hoc Committee for Reef Restoration Adaptation um, since 2019. Uh, the ECRI plan of action included four goals relevant to restoration. One was to establish an inventory of existing um, and uh, upcoming reef restoration activities. Secondly, to identify leading and innovative practices. Third, to revise the 2005 ECRI resolution that we've already heard about. And um, fourth, which is probably the most important, is to really seek active collaboration um, and participation throughout the world, but particularly including some of the major players listed below. So um, I've shared the chairing duties for this um, committee with uh, Dr. David Suda, who you'll, you'll hear from soon. 
We have 30 active members from seven ICRI nations and 14 organizations. We have online meetings um, every second month in two time zones and then share our notes. And then we have out of session meetings uh, in the off months if we have particular jobs we're working on. Uh, we connect and share information, review and publish reports and journal articles and um, uh, facilitate capacity building activities. One of our first outputs from uh, 2019 was a, a review of um, core restoration projects and techniques around the world. Um, we publish this as a report, um, journal article, uh, online database and visualization. And um, as of last week, the uh, publication has now had over 100 citations. We also surveyed ICRI members um, about their uh, current and future um, restoration priorities and published that as for report 2019. Um, and uh, updated the 2005 resolution to reflect the changes uh, in reef restoration over the last 15 years, but also the, the changes in the, the context of the status of coral reefs. Our major output from 2020, um, it gives me a great opportunity to really acknowledge the great support from UNEP um, and this um, ad hoc committee as well who uh, paid for a lot of the, the work on this report um, was coral reef restoration as a strategy to improve ecosystem services, a guide for to coral restoration um, methods. And this has had a lot of um, wide up, up, uptake and use. In 2020, we also, because the um, research is moving forward so quickly, we updated the um, database and, and visualization to over 400 individual projects um, and this database is now um, hosted on the ICRI website and has had almost 9,000 loads so it's getting well used. And we also supported the, um, the ICRI restoration hub as a one-stop shop to find all the information about core restoration and um, related ecosystems. We help facilitate the translation of um, uh, reports in, in Japanese and French into English I um, would like to continue that, um, you know, translation and interpretation work. So um, our current uh, task list for, for 2021, just to, to wrap up, um, we've got a, um, a new report focus on implementation uh, for coral restoration, another report looking into uh, restoration funding, and we've um, been able to help out to facilitate some online training and capacity building, which is looking like it's going to be provided by the Reef Restoration Network um, and in partnership with many other organizations which are represented in the ad hoc committee. We uh, also had a, a lot of fun with a shared workshop with the resilience-based management workshop um, about how does restoration fit within resilience-based management. Um, and we've got a journal article that's now in internal review should be submitted really soon um, at the shared output between those two ad hoc committees. Um, and we were able to support the Restoring Coral Reefs webinar um, associated with the launch of the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration. And, and lastly, contributing to the, um, the, the draft global biodiversity framework target for, for corals for restoration. So um, in the future, we've had three years as an ad hoc committee um, and there's some uh, desire from at least our group to continue the networking opportunities um, through this. So there might be opportunity to have this as a, um, a ICRI network because three years is probably enough for an ad hoc committee. Um, and one idea that we put out there is perhaps there might be an opportunity even to merge that with um, resilience-based management um, in terms of, you know, two really linked activities. But I would like to acknowledge that there are it's a much busier space um, than, it, than it was three years ago in terms of uh, different groups involved. Um, so we need some careful thought to make sure that we're adding value through this, but I don't think there's any other organization like ICRI uh, to provide a global voice for, for uh, coral reef, uh, for coral reefs. So I think we still have a really strong role there. Lastly, I'd just like to say thank you so much. It's been um, such an honor for the last two and a half years to, um, to get to know so many um, talented and knowledgeable people. And um, yeah, thanks very much for being able to contribute to our crew. Thank you so much, Ian. That was uh, great. And we look forward to being part of the future ideas. Uh, now I'd like to welcome uh, 
Catherine Martin, my colleague, uh, who is going to give us an update on the Resilience-Based Management Ad Hoc Committee. Thanks, Mark. I'll just share my screen. Oops. I'm just going to start off with some uh, brief background information on the committee, which was established in 2019 as a result of a workshop held at an ICRI general meeting uh, by the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority. And it was in collaboration with the Nature Conservancy, the Great Barrier Reef Foundation, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And it came about because as we know, pressures on coral reefs are intensifying and urgent actions required to protect them. So in the last decade, we've seen increased incidents of climate impacts with widespread bleaching events. And here are a couple of examples from around the world in 2016. So with the climate continuing to warm, management strategies are required to build resilience of coral reefs and the communities that depend on them to help them withstand and recover from disturbances. So with this, the aim of the committee was to identify supports and develop best practice guidance on the actions that will enable members to tailor and scale up resilience-based management to meet local, national and global needs. Now, there were four supporting objectives um, and they were centred around targeted communications, overcoming challenges, building opportunities and building capacity. Now, earlier this year, we undertook a survey of members' um, needs and priorities because we wanted to make sure that the outputs from the committee were fit for purpose. And we identified several key, key gaps. But importantly, um, there was a general lack of understanding of resilience-based management across the board. So you can see here that 60% of respondents felt that resilience-based management is not well understood by the government. And we felt that this was pertinent to address this because the lack of understanding really represents a barrier to the uptake and implementation of resilience-based management through development of strategies and securing of funding. So how do we go about addressing this? Well, we made resilience-based management accessible across each of the four objectives. So under targeted communications, we developed a web page on the ICRI forum, the Resilience Hub, that has simple key messages that members can use um, we also will be releasing an infographic that will be available for download. Under overcoming challenges, we'll be releasing a policy brief that will help members to gain support and secure funding. So it should be useful for leveraging out, um, outcomes and also addressing some of that lack of understanding by governments and other stakeholders. Under building opportunities, uh, we compiled a list of key contacts that members can go to for support. And for building capacity, we've consolidated all of the key plans, um, policies, practical tools, online courses, and other resources for ease of access. Members wanted something that was practical, easy to understand, accessible. And you can see some examples of key policies and plans there. And I will say that the Nature Conservancy will be releasing a course on resilience in 2022 through the Reef Resilience Network. So watch this space. Now this is a screenshot of the Resilience Hub that will go live soon. Um, so the web page will be a focal point and information portal for all the resources that I've just mentioned. In terms of next steps, we'll be releasing policy brief and infographic in the next month. And that demystifies resilience and resilience-based management. So it explains quite simply what reef resilience is, the importance of uh, protecting and building resilience, and the practical actions you can take both on the ground and in terms of raising awareness and developing strategies and policies. Now, as part of that, we will be holding a special members event that will have a question and answer session to promote uptake and also build capacity. And then in early 2022, we're um, considering having a joint meeting with the ICRI Ad Hoc Committee for Reef Restoration, as Ian mentioned. And I'd like to end there, but to thank, a big thank you to all the committee members for their valuable contribution during this term. As you can see, we have members from a diverse range of organisations with a diverse range of skill sets, and they can be contacted from the website. So thank you. How do we stop sharing? Um, stop share, there we go. <laughs> thank you very much, Catherine. Uh, now, the second small scale grants program was successfully launched by UN Environment and ICRI earlier this year. 
So Letitia Cavallo, Head of Units Marine and Freshwater Branch is here to sh share some of the highlights with us. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me well. UNAF, uh, UNAF congratulations the current secretariat for their many accomplishments and wishes the US well as they take the, round, the helm for the next uh, two years. UNAP has been honored to support and collaborate with ICRI on a small grants program dedicated to the conservation and restoration of coral reefs, mangroves, and seagrass. This is the second round of UNAP uh, slash ICRI small grants, uh, with the first round having been successfully launched in 2017 and concluded in 2019, with five innovative and impactful for conservation restoration slash restoration projects uh, supported with great results in the field. The call for proposals for this latest small grants program was launched in February 2021, and the interest has been overwhelming. More than 430 proposals were received from all corners of the world, highlighting the real need there is for even a small scale funding for ecological conservation and restoration projects. It was really difficult to process uh, and decide on the proposals to fund, but eventually eight partners in seven countries across four continents have been funded to a total amount of almost $600,000. Generous funding for this small grants program has been received from the US Department of State, the Prince Albert II of the Monaco Foundation, and there is potentially more funding for further projects in the pipeline from the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority. Projects are representative of diverse ecosystems, including coral reefs, mangroves, and seagrasses, and the projects that integrate approaches to conserve the linkages between the ecosystems. Projects were selected on their innovativeness, positive uh, environmental impacts, inclusion of local or indigenous uh, communities, sustainability, and opportunities for scalability. The projects include coral reef restoration in Belize and the Bahamas, seagrass restoration in the Gambia and Madagascar, marine protected areas in Costa Rica and the Philippines, and a blue carbon market project in Kenya. Videos and communications products from the small brands will be shared with ICRI members as the projects progress. We are now at the beginning of this exciting process, uh, having just signed contracts with our partners um, to begin implementing activities on the ground. We wish the project implementers best of luck in the achieving their objectives to save these critical habitats uh, that provide such great value to humanity, from local communities to our global climate. We also reiterate our commitment uh, with support to ICRI and the implementation of this, uh, its plan of action. And we look forward to continuing collaboration as we consider ICRI and all the partners in this partnership, our most valued partner for our work on coral reefs uh, and associated ecosystems. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Letitia. Sounds very exciting and uh, congratulations. Uh, now, can I... Uh, ask David Souter to give us a quick teaser on the uh, much anticipated launch of the sixth GCRMN global report. And a reminder to everybody that after this meeting, that there will be a, uh, a more fulsome update. David. Indeed there will be. Uh, Francis, are we playing the animation now or after? Now? So I think over to Tom. How can we know the current status, trends and likely futures of our coral reefs with certainty? Prized in 1998, the global average hard coral cover on the world's coral reefs was high and stable. But a single mass coral bleaching event killed 8% of the world's coral. Coral cover recovered during the next decade until a succession of large-scale bleaching events killed 14% of the world's coral. Coral reefs simply hadn't the time between bleaching events to recover. As a consequence, the global average cover of algae on the world's coral reefs has increased by 20%. Algal dominance reduces the ability of corals and the marine life they support to re-establish themselves. It's time to step up our efforts to protect and restore our coral reefs. 
to help communities, businesses and governments conserve and manage our vital coral reefs, the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network has released a new report examining the status and trends of the world's coral reefs. Several hundred scientists and organisations contributed to this report which is based on a global data set of almost 2 million observations from over 12,000 sites in 73 countries. Now, in the first global report since 2008, you can discover the status, trends and likely futures of your coral reefs to help you make a positive difference. To learn more and read the report, visit www.gcrmn.net. So that was a much more eloquent way of presenting some of the very, very high level reports than perhaps my presentation will be in, an, in half an hour's time. But you received there the very high level uh, results of the, of the report. Um, I'm just going to uh, share with you um, my screen quickly. because there are a vast number of people that I really need to thank um, for this particular effort. And the, this really was a monumental effort, I've got to say. Um, the through more than 300 scientists that willingly contributed their data to 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 this particular effort um, the regional coordinators that helped link with those data contributors to uh, chaperone the delivery of regional uh, chapters in the report uh, the australian government in particular uh, through the department of foreign affairs and trade the Principality of Monaco, the Government of Sweden, uh, Prince Albert II of Monaco Foundation, and the United Nations Environment Program all contributed significantly to the delivery of this particular report. Um, and for that, I absolutely thank them for their contributions. Without them, uh, it would be a, a different scenario today. I'd also like to thank, though, in particular, the supporters of the GCRMN and particularly those within the, the ICRI family that Margaret uh, referred to earlier um, in her opening remarks. Uh, ICRI, of course, is the parent body to the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network. And I'd particularly like to thank the outgoing chairs um, and certainly look forward to, to working very closely with the incoming USA Secretariat. Uh, finally, I would like to thank the Australian Institute of Marine Science who uh, hosts the, the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network and is able to provide that um, quite, I think, solid uh, global leadership in terms of coral reef monitoring and transfer some of the experiences that we have um, in monitoring all of our reefs in Australia, um, both on the east and the west coast, uh, to help build capability and capacity within the, the world's uh, reef monitoring network. So you did just get a quick teaser. I was going to just quickly run through some of the absolute highlights um, to perhaps whet one's appetite for the, the follow-on session, which will obviously provide much greater detail um, than, than what I'll provide here. But this is a genuinely global report. Um, the animation ran through some of these uh, high level statistics, but almost 2 million observations from 12,000 sites in 73 countries collected across 41 years. That is a, a substantial effort. Um, and yeah, thanks everyone to, 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 uh, for their involvement. The last thing I, I wanted to touch on quickly was how this related to delivering theme two of the ICRI plan of action, which is um, really a core element of, of the GCRMN's activities. Um, Teresa mentioned theme two earlier. Uh, there are four elements within theme two. Several of them are really focused on building capability and capacity for monitoring coral reefs around the world. And that's something that's absolutely core to, to the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network. Um, the final point is producing a status of coral reefs of the world report by mid 2020. 
we may have missed our mid 2020 target for a whole range of reasons that were certainly beyond our, our, uh, our control. Uh, but in about uh, 45 minutes time, uh, it will land on people's table and people can download it from, uh, from the GCRMN website. So uh, thank you very much, Margaret. And thank you to all uh, those who are involved. Uh, looking forward to a, a strong future and a continued reinvigoration of the, of the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. And uh, can I just say, like some of the results really and truly summarises why we are all here today and why this is all so important to all of us. So look forward to uh, this afternoon or this evening. Now, uh, I'd like to invite representatives from each of the Secretariat Chairs, Australia, Indonesia and Monaco, to provide some remarks. So Josh, can I just, so hold, we just swapped the, the agenda slightly and could I call on Hendra to, to lead us off from Indonesia? Hendra. Right. Uh, thank you, Margaret. Um, so I believe that um, um, we would like to uh, convey the, the, the word from uh, Australia, Indonesia and Monaco. So um, I would like to invite so the slightly agenda. So Margaret, um, I will be deliver the, the speech, Margaret. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, uh, Your Excellency, His Serene, uh, Highness, uh, Prince Albert Sikh of Monaco, um, Mr. Josh Thomas, Chief Executive Officer, Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority of Australia, Ambassador Helen Agren, Sweden Ambassador for the Ocean, Mrs. Monica Medina, Assistant Secretary of State for Ocean, Environment and Science, Mr. Francis Stope, Agri Global Coordinator. Uh, uh, <clears throat> please accept my apologies to deliver uh, the speech from our minister. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon from Jakarta. First of all, I would like to congratulate all of us, colleagues from Australia, Monaco, on achievement of almost three years as a co-chair of WICRI. Unlike the previous chairmanship, the tenure of Australia, Monaco, and Indonesia were quite uh, difficult and full challenges. This is due to the increasing issue of coral reef management in the context of marine development and adaptation to the climate change, as well as a condition uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic that we have faced since earlier 2020. So we cannot carry out some ICRI secretarial work program, as I mentioned. One of them is the International Tropical Marine Ecosystem Management Symposium or ITMEMS meeting. Um, Indonesia has prepared well for the symposium, but with the pandemic condition getting worse, we must cancel the meeting. However, there are many important things that we can do and produce, such as reporting of global coral reef monitoring, accommodating coral reef elements in the post-2020 CBD Biodiversity Convention Framework, and the Secretariat's active participation in the various international meetings. The formation of an ad hoc committee has also proven to be able to overcome the challenges of physical meetings. The ad hoc committee has worked very well and effectively produced outputs that support the work plan of the ICRI Secretariat. For this reason, Indonesia believes that objective of strengthening knowledge, capacity, and increasing collaboration and communication with various stakeholders have been carried out well during the chairmanship of in Monaco, Australia, Indonesia. The achievement that we uh, have obtained during the chairmanship period certainly provide reinforcement for the future development of ICRI. The present and the contribution of ICRI in the sustainable management of marine ecosystem will be increasingly significant and anticipated by the global community. Of course, ICRI Secretariat cannot do by it itself. <clears throat> the role of the active participation uh, of all ICRI members are very important. Indonesia hopes that all of us can further enhance the solidity and synergy of the activities among the ICRI members. With the better management of coral reef of in each ICRI member countries, the benefits and impact of ICRI existence will be more evident. Indonesia view this is one of the biggest challenges and tasks for the next chairmanship. Indonesia itself currently and continues to promote the implement a sustainable marine development approach through the blue economy. The preservation of marine ecosystem is pre-requested for the sustainability environmental services 
and is the key to the sustainability of the social and economic life of community. Conservation of coral reefs and other important ecosystems should be the main goal in marine resources management. With the improvement of the marine ecosystem quality, its capacity will increase to support economic, community welfare, and state income from the ocean sector. In order to maintain sustainability of coral reef ecosystem, Indonesia has made effort to manage domestically and actively participate in international forum. Indonesia is the initiator of the Coral Triangle Initiative on Coral Reef Fisheries and Food Security, or CTSFF, which consists of six countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Timor-Leste, Papua New Guinea, and Solomon Islands. CTSFF has carried out various activities with significant outcome to support the preservation of the coral reef ecosystem. The numbers of coverage of marine protected areas, or MPA in the CTI member countries, has increased through strengthening the CTM and MPS network by improving evidence-based effective management of protected areas. In 2019, Indonesia achieved more than 20, 20 million uh, hectares of MPA, which cover 40% of coral reef ecosystem. IUCN, other effective area-based conservation measure guidelines are also being considered by CTM member countries to fulfill their ITCBD target 11 obligations. Indonesia leadership in CTFSFF is very much in line with what we do in ICRI. Indonesia takes a strategic role of the CTFSFF forum, namely Life Reef Fish Food Threat Intergovernmental Forum, which align with the ICRI action plan. Uh, by encouraging domestic strengthening and synergies with the CTI and Southeast Asian countries, which are the main supplier and exporter of the reef, live reef fish, also applying ecosystem approach and strengthening CTA, CTM pass network, we can protect reef fish and other economically important fish during the spawning area, the spawning process in the MPA. To support this action plan, Indonesia is committed to continue to collaborate and cooperate at regional and international level to prevent cross-border IU fishing activities and illegal reef, illegal live reef fish threat activities. We believe that to achieve that, the support of science and technology is needed. Science-based policies are the most appropriate choice to address the increasingly pressure on the environment from socio-economic activities. In this case, Indonesia feels that ICRI present is very important, as well as the need to continue to cooperate with all parties, especially among uh, ICRI member countries. For this reason, Indonesia congratulates the United States on the election of the new ICRI chairman. The experience and resources that we have existed so far will be invaluable to in existing implementation of the chairmanship at this challenging time. Post-COVID recovery and limited resources of funding that focus on economic activities are really in almost uh, in, in all countries. The future work of the ICRI needed to anticipate this condition while maximizing all the opportunities that exist in the building back better approach. Finally, once again, Indonesia would like to thank Australia and Monaco who have been very productive and supportive partners for more than two and a half years. Many thanks also to convey to the regional, to secretariat staff for carrying its role and function very well. Hopefully in the future, ICRI will be stronger, more productive and have real impact on the coral reef management at national and global level. Thank you, Minister of Marine Affairs and Fishery of Republic Indonesia, Sakti Wahyu Trenggono. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you very much, Hendra, uh, for speaking on behalf of your minister, and, and thank you, Indonesia. Uh, I'd like to now welcome Josh Thomas, the CEO of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority. Uh, Josh and my boss. Josh. Thanks very much, Margaret. Uh, I'll start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the Great Barrier Reef and the traditional custodians from right around the world who care for our coral reefs. Uh, and have done for millennia. But also I'd like to acknowledge His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco, the Republic of Indonesia, the United States of America, and all members of the International Coral Reef Initiative who are here this evening, this evening Australian time. It's been a great pleasure to be here uh, to mark the handover of the International Coral Reef Initiative, co-chairship from Australia, Indonesia, and Monaco to the United States of, Australia, of America. I want to thank my fellow co-chairs, Indonesia and Monica, for their strong commitment to ICRI over these past three years. It's been an incredibly highly productive secretariat team, as I think we've uh, heard here this evening. 
with a number of significant uh, achievements that further strengthen the Ukraine network and raise the profile of coral reefs worldwide. As an island nation and the custodian of the Great Barrier Reef, Australia places a very high value on coral reefs for their beauty, their inherent value, as well as the contribution they make to the world and the communities that depend on them. These precious ecosystems underpin ocean health and provide sustainability of many ocean resources upon which hundreds of millions of people around the world rely. Despite their immense value, coral reefs are uniquely vulnerable to the increasing global threat of climate change, as well as other impacts. And now more than ever, we need to strengthen our global efforts to reduce pressures on coral reefs and build their resilience. The International Coral Reef Initiative plays an important role in achieving this goal, and we have made some very significant progress, progress during this secretariat period. We've welcomed 15 new members, including five countries, plus the European Union, and several NGOs leading important work on coral reefs. Committed to a plan of action that highlighted the crucial and urgent need for collective and bold actions to protect coral reefs. We've hosted three successful IPRI general meetings, including one right here on the Great Barrier Reef in 2019, which marked 25 years since IPRI was first established. And we've showcased leading practice examples of resilience-based management and the tools available for coral reef managers. Something of which Australia is very proud of is of course the reinvigoration of the global coral reef monitoring network coordinated by Australia's Institute of Marine Science. And I would here like to acknowledge the Honourable Penny Wensley, our Chair of the Australian Institute of Marine Science, who I know has been a great champion of the reinvigoration of GCR and then, and David, we're very much looking forward to seeing more about that tonight. Australia is proud of its reputation as a world leader in coral reef science and management. We're committed to sharing our experience and increasing global cooperation and dialogue to better protect and manage the global coral reef estate. We also seek to learn from the experience of ICRI members uh, facing similar challenges at local scales, something I've had the privilege of doing not just through ICRI but through other international forum um, since I've been in this role. It was with this spirit that Australia co-founded ICRI in 1995 alongside France, Japan, Jamaica, the Philippines, Sweden, the United Kingdom and the United States of America. Today, the work of ICRI brings together the country custodians of over 75% of the world's coral reefs and key organisations representing the best coral reef expertise the world has to offer. And it's something that should not be lost in this group. We are proud to have led the ICRI Secretariat alongside Indonesia and Monaco, and it is my great pleasure to be handing over to the United States, a fellow ICRI founding member and a tremendous contributor to both ICRI and the world's knowledge and capacity in reef science and management. I would like to thank you all for your ongoing commitment to ICRI. I look forward to seeing ICRI carry on its important work with the United States as our chair. Working together through forums such as ICRI, we can make a difference to secure the future of coral reefs for generations to come. In addition to the raw outputs of this forum, it's the collaborations, relationships, and ideas and knowledge exchange in reef science and protection that make ICRI such a special institution. And I know these relationships will continue to flourish under the good stewardship of our friends in America. Thank you. And with that, I would like to hand over to His Serene Highness, Prince Albert II of Monaco. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Josh. Uh, Madam Undersecretary, Your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I'd like to say uh, briefly how proud I am of the work accomplished in the in these last three years, during which the Principality of Monaco was uh, proud to act as co-chair of, of ICRI. These uh, last three years were marked by substantial collective efforts uh, for which I warmly thank all the members of ICRI, especially Australia and Indonesia, with whom we shared uh, the co-chairmanship of ICRI. I'd also like to thank, of course, the permanent secretary. The efforts made over the last three years have helped us advance on several important issues. I'd like to mention in particular the IPCC's special report on the oceans and the cryosphere released in Monaco in 2019. This report has enabled us to gain a much more accurate knowledge concerning the status of coral reefs and the dangers that they face. By calling attention to the prospect of the possible disappearance of most of the world's corals, the report prompted us to conduct our work using complementary approaches. 
This is what we did together during these years. The publication of the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network report is a major step forward. It gives us a full and accurate picture of the status of corals, as well as a tool for assessing the policies to be implemented. Faced with such vast and complex issues, it is essential to compare observations, uh, share know-how, and pool resources. It is also essential to adopt diversified approaches. I'm thinking of ex situ conservation mechanisms, which I feel need to be developed by ECRI. This is what the Monaco Scientific Center has started to do via the World Coral Conservation uh, and Con Conservatory Project, excuse me. This type of initiative is essential to gain a better understanding of corals before it is too late. To identify the corals, it, it is possible to protect and to give ourselves a chance one day to restore coral reefs whose survival seems increasingly uncertain, unfortunately. Faced with the threat of a dramatic decline of marine ecosystems, we need to intensify different initiatives, tools, and partnerships in an inclusive way. This is one of the reasons why we were particularly pleased to welcome 50 new members to, to ECRI uh, these uh, past three years. Now, I'd like to acknowledge them and tell them how valuable their involvement and contribution are and will continue to be in the future. I'd also like to express satisfaction with the recently created Global Fund for Coral Reefs, catalyzing a substantial financial ecosystem for conservation and development of coral reefs. And since we are always so much stronger together, in conclusion, I'd like to say how delighted I am to see the United States of America assume the chairmanship today. I know that they will take these issues higher and further, mo mobilizing a greater number of people around them, around us, around ICRI, and even more goodwill and good energy. I to thank them for, for their involvement and thank you all for the outstanding work achieved by ICRI over the last few years. I know that this work will continue and I will certainly always actively support you with my government and my foundation. Th thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Serene Highness. Uh, I'd now like to, uh, Sweden has been a big supporter of ICRI over, over many years. And I'd like to welcome Hel Helene, uh, Helen Wahlgren, the ambassador of the ocean at the Swedish Ministry of Foreign Affairs to say a few words. Thank you so much, uh, Your Serene Highness. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, all courtesy, courtesies observed. It's an honor to be here with you uh, this morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. When we talk about coral reefs, we will probably visualize colorful colonies abundant with life in shallow tropical waters. I dare say that Sweden is not a country that comes to mind. But we do have one coral, uh, cold water coral. Lophelia pertusa, living at 80 to 100 meters depth off the co west coast of Sweden in the Costa Fjord, Vädere Fjord, close to the Norwegian border in Skagerrak. Over 1,300 species have been observed in the coral colonies, comparable to the diversity in tropical reefs. The Lophelia corals have probably lived there for about 8,000 years but they are struggling now to survive. Bottom trawling, anchoring and other physical disturbances has reduced the colonies from an area of 10,000 square meters to only around 500. Climate change with warming waters and ocean acidification puts further pressure on the struggling corals. The good news is that cor uh, the reefs are recovering after regulating bottom trawling in the area and projects to restore reef habitats are ongoing. By testing different substrates for coral larvae and gathering environmental data, hopes are high that the reefs can recover further and contribute to increased biodiversity in our waters. Sweden's engagement and support to ICRI, of course, stretches far beyond saving Lophelia pertusa, 
however important this species is. Our commitment is based on the recognition that a healthy and biodiverse environment is the basis for economic development, prosperity and human security. In 1972, the world came together in Stockholm for the first UN conference on the human environment. In the Stockholm Declaration, you can read, and I quote, In the long and tortuous evolution of the human race on this planet, a stage has been reached when through the rapid acceleration of science and technology, man has acquired the power to transform his environment in countless ways and on, on an unprecedented scale. That was almost 30 years before the chemist Paul Kreutzen talked about Anthropocene as a new geological era. Despite these cautions, we as a species have caused unbelievable damage to our home, the Blue Planet. But we must remember that it lies also within our power to do unbelievably good. If we come together and collaborate in good faith, we can reverse negative trends of climate change, biodiversity loss and pollution. The daunting facts in the recent IPCC report pictures a gloomy future without coral reef if we can't manage to halt carbon emissions. As leaders once again prepare to attend the UNFCCC conference of the parties, this time in Glasgow, we must continue to, monitoring, uh, to monitor the world's ecosystems, to keep track of the effects of carbon emissions and other stressors to halt and to halt pollution, to establish marine protected areas, and to share experiences, technology, data, resources around uh, the world. ICRI is a unique and important initiative doing just that. Sweden is committed to put SDG 13, 14 and 15 front and center in multilateral cooperation. Next year in June, we will ho host the UN Stockholm Plus 50 meeting to mark the 50th anniversary of the first UN conference on the env environment. We encourage you all to contribute to that meeting, which will focus on redefining our relationship with nature, and delivery on sustainable consumption and production in building back our economies better. Sweden is also working to integrate biodiversity and climate considerations in all our ODA, and we support protection of marine life and sustainable livelihoods for coastal communities through the Blue Action Fund and other instruments. As a sponsor of ICRI, the Swedish government would like to thank Monaco, Australia and Indonesia for your invaluable work as Secretariat for ICRI. And we also want to thank the US uh, for taking over this important task. We look forward to continued collaboration with you all during the UN Decade of Ocean Science and the UN Decade of Ecosystem Restoration. Thank you. Thank you, Helen, and thank you for your continued support. Uh, it is now my great pleasure to introduce Monica Medina, the Assistant Secretary of State of Oceans, Environment and Science of the United States of America. The USA was a founding member of ICRI, as a number of people have mentioned, uh, in 1994 and has been a very strong su supporter of ICRI over the years. Uh, this is the third time the US will chair ICRI, and I look forward to the continuation of ICRI's important work under their le leadership. Monica, thank you. Thank you. Can you all hear me? Yes. Great. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Ambassador Ogren. Thank you, Your Serene Highness, Excellencies, and colleagues. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. It's such an honor for me to be here with you today and to follow you, Your Serene Highness, you have personally done so much to galvanize global support for ocean and coral reef conservation. You've been a hero of mine for many years. This is my first official event as the US Assistant Secretary of State for Oceans and International Environmental and Scientific Affairs. I cannot tell you how thrilled I am to be taking on my new role and how privileged I feel to be able to work with all of you to protect 
our ocean, our precious reefs, and the life and livelihoods that they support. For me, this is a return to ICRI, as I was working at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's General Council when ICRI was founded. It is wonderful to be back. I wanna begin by extending the United States' gratitude and that of all ICRI membership to the current co-chairs, Australia, Indonesia, and Monaco for the very important work you have accomplished over the past three years. We have really big shoes to fill. Your work has been remarkable. You have advanced our collective efforts to protect coral reefs in the face of ever increasing threats. Your work has kept us together as an active thriving community despite the challenges we've all faced during the COVID-19 pandemic. So thank you very, very, very much. We are not letting you go though. Even though you are relinquishing your roles as chairs, we still need your leadership, your wisdom, your experience, and especially your continued commitment to ICRI and its mission. It is wonderful to be here representing the Biden-Harris administration. We know the United States has not been at the table as much as we might've been in recent years, but let me assure you, the United States is back. We intend to tackle the twin crises of climate change and the loss of biodiversity with all our tools, assets, know-how, commitment, and enthusiasm. And we will do it based on science. And we wanna do it with you. The IPBES 2019 Global Assessment of Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services laid bare our shared grim reality. We are losing nature more rapidly than ever before. The pace and extent of our losses are increasing. And unless we act and act now, we could lose more than a million species in our lifetime. We all know, and many of you more deeply even than I, the daunting challenges that coral reefs face. But we also know that coral reefs are resilient. They can recover. ICRI was founded on that very premise that when we work at it, coral reefs can be saved. And we have shown this in our collective work together. And now we have to redouble our efforts. Looking ahead, ICRI will be dedicated to a future built on our collective beliefs that together we can act now to enhance the survival rates of coral reefs. Together, we can act now and tackle and reverse the climate crisis. Together, we can act now to reduce local stressors on coral reefs. Together, we can act now to create marine protected areas to protect and preserve what we have for future generations to enjoy. Together, we can act now to restore coral reefs that need our help desperately. Together, we can act now to combat coral diseases. Together, we can act now to invest in research so we can use the best ocean science to guide our way forward on all these actions. Together, we can act now to reach beyond our membership, and you've done that so well already. We have really big shoes to fill on that too, to educate and create a broader and deeper community dedicated to protecting, restoring, and treasuring coral reefs. Together, importantly, we can act now to include indigenous peoples and local communities, and we can listen to their knowledge of the reefs, seagrass, mangroves, and all the creatures that depend on them. But we can only do this if we all work together, and there is no time to lose. The U.S. must continue to build on the fabulous work of ICRI and the leadership of the current co-chairs. We stand ready to work with all of you and to expand the reach of ICRI beyond our current membership to turn the tide in favor of coral reefs. So thank you very much for the trust you've placed in the United States. We look forward, I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you again. And now I'd like to turn to His Serene Highness, Prince Albert, to inspire us with some closing words. Thank you very much. Uh, no, I thought Margaret was going to come back on. But, uh, th thank you very much, Madam Assistant Secretary. Um, I'd like to, of course, once again, uh, thank the United States of America for their commitment uh, and, and their uh, leadership now with, in ICRI. And I offer them my encouragement for the very difficult and, and hard and uh, arduous mission uh, that they have agreed to, to take on a mission to promote uh, coral preservation, of course, but more generally, uh, the protection of our, of, of our global ocean, our planet, and uh, 
so that we can have a future. I'm confident that they will rise to this challenge and I'm, I have confidence in ICRI and its permanent secretariat and it's all in all its member states, uh, both current and hopefully more states will join in the future. And so I, I wish you all really the best of success, uh, the best of success for, for, for ICRI, uh, but more importantly for uh, the better understanding and better protection of coral reefs around the world. So thank you so much and, and all, all my very best wishes to all of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, so that concludes this part. Uh, Francis, am I correct that we've got 10 minutes and break and then if we can all uh, join. Do we stay online, Francis, and just? Yes, thank you, Margaret. The link for the GCRM and launch will be the same. So just stay online for the next 10 minutes and we'll be, we'll be showing the result of the long-awaited global coral reef monitoring report. Thanks a lot. Thank you.